it's not a challenge that many would relish. We've just identified the 10, 11, 12 worst behaving pupils in year seven. Recipe for a disaster. Absolutely. And then pull it on. Get that off. Sit down, quietly, right now. Quickly. Lisa Robertson, a learning mentor, is taking on the challenge. Some of you sitting in this room now might be able to relate to the fact that you maybe you've had difficulties in some of your lessons. You've maybe had difficulties in behaviour or the way you've conducted yourself or made mistakes, but we'll be able to work out ways in which we'll be able to make it easier for us to get along in school. Strategies and ways that will help you in order to deal with situations back in the classroom. Lisa is on a behaviour and attendance course, which is open to anybody who works in a school. As part of this course, I've decided to identify a behaviour recovery group for this term with my colleague. We are taking 10 of the targeted group of Year 7s who have behavioural issues. First and foremost, I think we're going to need to identify Tammy yeah. for a number of reasons. Yeah, that's good. And in terms of the, the poor behaviour that a lot of staff complain, and that's evidence here with the data mm -hmm. and in this data, Paul's got to be on the list, I would thought, as well. Right. So we've got inclusion room data, uh -huh. and we've got all the, our top offenders, really, from yeah. the detentions highlighted. Mm. Um, so really, that gives us quite a, a clear picture of who I think um, we would, what I would want to identify mm. in terms, because these are the kids that are clearly struggling in a lot of the lessons. We're just going to do a bit okay. of To listen here. to each other, okay. okay? This is respecting others' points of view. You're all going to be doing exactly the same activity, only with a different learning style. The visual style. Look at the Lego house in the picture. OK? There are photographs there of a Lego house. Right then, off you go. Let's go Legos! <laughs> if I'd given a member of staff a class list with the names that we've just plucked out, they would be horrified. Now, the fact that Lisa's prepared and really wants to get stuck into these kids is fantastic. Behaviour and attendance are central to learning. Uh, first of all, if children aren't in school, they can't learn properly. They can't learn to socialise and they won't be able to mature and handle issues. And so we need more people who can understand that developmental role of the child so that they can input into it, support it and, uh, and bring about some positive outcomes. The course Lisa has enrolled on is aimed at doing just that. The National Programme for Specialist Leaders of Behaviour and Attendance runs for a year. Three quarters of it is work-based and intersessional activities like this one are critical if candidates are to qualify. Apart from the three study days, what they need to do is they need to also attend at least a minimum of seven out of ten cluster sessions. The cluster sessions are two hours long, and what each candidate needs to do is to facilitate one of these cluster sessions. However, there was a couple of alternative ones, like lack of empathy, we discussed it, you know, where a, a student might just take the opportunity to pass comment to somebody else that is actually making a positive contribution. At the end of that, when the portfolio was completed, all the evidence is put together. That's externally moderated and assessed, and if successful, I'll get the DCSF certificate. Science teacher Catherine Forster from Southmore Community School qualified recently. Excuse me, it seems to be a lot of chatting when you've been given a little task to do. Can I remind you that if I've got to spend time telling you the expectations of the classroom, what are we not doing? Who can remind me what we're not doing? Learning. Megan. Learning. We're not learning, that's right. The difference that I've seen them, um, since starting the NAPSABA programme is that I feel a lot more focused in understanding that behaviour and attendance is actually the driving force which encourages learning. Ensuring that every child has the same opportunity because of behaviour, because of attendance, to make sure that they are attaining their goals. 80% of you in here are at what level? Level 7s, that's amazing. 
We've just got to make sure the rest of you get up to that level as well. This kind of group, bringing this group together, behaviour recovery session, we've taken, there's 12 members of Year 7 here that have had difficulties in behaviour and difficulties in the way that they've conducted themselves, choices they've made. These are children that don't, haven't worked together, sometimes have difficulties working together in a team in a positive way. This has brought them together today. This is absolutely brilliant. It's A1. Hello, Mokole. I'll find the wall red. Yellow ear and red, see? We need to fill all of this along with white, white, white. Uh, white. Between, between the other three of the group, you need to, you need to agree out there what parts you're going to look for. Then feed it back to Rachel, who Rachel's getting frustrated. Wanna have a look? Um, this is coming. Are we listening to Daniel? Yeah. 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 This is teamwork. This is brill. Right. And then the It's oh. in the middle. Oh, I saw them go close to that one. There's a space. How did you feel at the beginning? You know, when everybody was starting to build the house and things like that, and you weren't getting the instructions. What were you feeling? At first, was we feeling um, frustrated or annoyed or? Four ready yeah. eats, eh? Four ready eats. Are you still feeling like that? Just concentration. It's fab, isn't it? It's not something that I've done before, but something I have every confidence in, given the fact that I did these cluster group sessions based around learning styles and the impact it has on behaviour and attendance in a school. Did anybody feel confused? Me. Irritated? Annoyed, frustrated. I all of you got frustrated. Did any of the group think about asking anybody for help? No. No, because you all wanted to try and do it yourself, yeah? What do you think could have been done or should have been done to change the outcome? Think you should have asked for help. If you're frustrated come lesson four, think about how you felt this session. Think how you could put into practice what you've now learned by talking through. As part of the course, Lisa works with a mentor, a member of the senior management team at Washington School. I've started my behaviour recovery session this oh, morning. It was right. the first session. Right. Um, I took 12 year seven pupils and we did the Lego activity. So after that session, I'm really, really looking forward to the next nine sessions with the kids. Last year, Mike was actually doing the, the MPSLBA course and has actually finished um, and completed his portfolio, which is an ideal opportunity because he's now my mentor, so will be able to offer me 100% support in the fact that he's actually been there and done that. This There's a portfolio day, so we're going to have to have all of these reflective vlogs done and the witness testimonies and the intercessional activities before that, so it's quite going to be quite a compact space of time. Right, so as it. your mentor then, would you like me to take one away, have a look at it, and I can guarantee to give you back, say, by the weekend? Yes, and as part of the intercessional activity, I will be required to write a reflective log on that. It's basically a log of my learning, what my outcomes were, what I got from that, but if done again, how could I do better? It's about always striving to improve, really. We have to put in um, occasional cover, cover on duty or whatever, and cover, cover to lesson. But what we've found is that on courses like this, investing in that does pay dividends in the longer term, and that's what we want. If my staff feel good about it, if as a result of that children feel good about themselves, if there is an impact across the school, then the investment is worth it. Since Lisa started to do the course, I've noticed that she's much more willing and feels more able to take on these uh, bigger roles. I'm starting to realise what I'm more capable of, you know, and I'm starting to see, and I'm shocking myself sometimes, you know, how I deal with things and, as part of this course, how confident I've become. <laughs> Now this topic is called ecological relationships and what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to classify all living organisms. At Southmoor Community School, course graduate Catherine Forster is using a tool she developed during her studies and which has now been implemented across the whole school. One of the systems that are designed to enable us to ensure clear messages about behaviour and attendance were consistent throughout the department. 
was a learning pyramid post that I've got in the right. science classrooms. Lloyd, where should we be on our pyramid? You tell me. Praising us. I should be, yeah. I should be. I should be praising you and giving you your stamps. Doing well. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get on with this. We're trialling it. We're undertaking some research to see if it's actually improving, helping us as a science department to make sure that the kids understand the praise and respect that they're receiving from their staff. So it is an ongoing process. So we've had the posters up in the rooms now for quite a while. Just really like to get some feedback on how, how anybody feels that they've been used. Well, I think it's been very useful. I think the children have, have, have looked at them and realised exactly what's going to happen to them if they do anything that's not right. There's clear consequences all the way down and it's also clarified it for the staff as well, made it much easier. The attitude of colleagues and peers towards the work I've been doing in behaviour and attendance, I can imagine at first was obviously wondering why I was, being, I was getting involved with some of these issues, especially on a whole school nature because I am just a classroom teacher. But it has given them fresh eyes as well, opening up the fact that behaviour and attendance is an issue of all of us that we all need to address on a daily basis. And it's strange, but as, as the course has progressed, I felt that I've been given more support because they've realised how developing some simple tools within the classroom helps us all to develop strategies for improving behaviour in the classroom. Well, I had mine up for a week or so and hadn't sort of used it at all. And then my year 10 were at such a stage, I thought, I'm going to have to sit them down and just tell them what the score is. And this came in really useful. And it sort of brought them up and made them stop and think. Behaviour and attendance is a challenge. It is a big challenge in this school. We have a diverse uh, nature of all, all children here. And uh, over the last two or three years, we have moved attendance on quite remarkably. That's due to the help of all the staff, but also with Catherine coming on board and with her experience in the work that she has been doing. One of the outcomes of completing the course has meant that I have been given opportunities to support more staff and develop ideas around the school. So how did you get on? Did you manage to get yourself a visible lesson plan? Good, so how are you going to use these? What are you going to do? What's your plan? I'm going to give them out as they come in the room so they know exactly what to do. Good. Tell them what they are and get them to refer to it at each point in the lesson. The last lesson we did the food web, the loop cards, and you took six minutes to do them. I'm going to time you today and we should be a lot faster. I know there's not as many, so some of you might have two. We should still be faster than what we were last lesson. Definitely being a port of call for a lot of the ITTs and NQTs to come to, just to help give them tools to promote positive behaviour within the classroom. We had a chat about how you could um, hope to keep pupils more on track in your lessons and we come up with a tool of using a visible lesson plan. Yeah. How did you get on with it? Really well. So did you feel it really helped with the kids feeling that they had some belonging and interest in the lesson? A bit more motivated? Yeah, did, yeah definitely. And I've got a difficult year nine class, which I think will really help keep the pace. Before I started this course, you would probably find it very few and far between that I would actually have the confidence to lead a meeting. But now, that's changed. I feel I'm a lot more confident now and definitely understand the skills that's required to lead and how using different leadership skills at different times helps to get the results that you need. All I'm interested in is you getting better levels, yeah? Doing well. Go on, let's, well done for getting it finished.